So what we're doing here is doing the same thing on the lateral side of the foot and you, you can palpate and, and identify the uh, lateral malleolus. Um, you can see where there's no movement when the ankle is put through dorsiflexion and plantar flexion. Where there is movement, there's got to be the joint in front of the lateral malleolus. So the tip is here and we can establish um, the anterior aspect doing the same type of thing. The next thing you do is then look for the, um, the, the most prominent part is the stellar process of the fifth metatarsal. And you can feel this uh, fatty sort of area here, uh, which is the soft tissue, the uh, ductor digitum in the brevis. Um, and you can then fill for and mark out the stylo process down here. And then the next area to fill for is the anterior beak of the calcaneus. Um, and the calcaneus doesn't move if you hold it here, but if you abduct and adduct the foot, you'll be able to feel where the, the beak of the calcaneus lives, which is at the top here, which th represents the floor of the sinus tarsus around this area. So from here, what you can then extrapolate out is where the uh, posterior aspect of the calcaneus finishes. And you can actually feel also the uh, lateral condyle of the calcaneus and the anterior aspect of the top of the calcaneus. There we go, that's good. And we can do something like this. And the calcaneus dives up, it's not in this direction, it's up in the higher sort of angle like so. Now, because we know that the uh, uh, posterior facet sits at this angle on the lateral side of the foot and the middle facet's on the medial side of the foot, we know it has to sit down uh, in forward of the, or prox distal to the uh, uh, anterior aspect of the calcaneus. So the posterior facet is somewhere like that. The lateral process of the talus comes forward here when you plantar flex the foot. So it's gonna be, uh, an angle something like this. And then if we feel for our talus again up here using the same sort of technique, that'll be the lateral side of the tailor head. And then in front of that has to be navicular. So there'll be a navicular in this area, which means we've come forward from the other side, something like this. And you start to see how how far laterally the navicular actually positions itself. And then you can extrapolate where the cuboid lives, which is something like this. And from there, you can feel for the base of the fourth metatarsal um, cuboid and the fifth metatarsal cube, where you can split the difference here, and it's gonna be something along this line. Which means if you've done it this way, you usually can work out where these joints live, where the sinus tarsi lives, which is in this area. Just to finish off the, the ankle joint, and probably if you come around the top here a little bit. So the uh, tibia actually extends all the way across laterally, it ends about here. And you can use that same palpation technique to feel for where the ankle joint lives. And we can join that up to where we started over here. And the fibula will extend across to here, this sort of region. So we're going at different planes now. It does look a bit different from the top because you can see the lateral view on this side. But the talus then will be coming forward, something like this. And that means that's where you can palpate for tailor dome lesions if they're anterior or uh, impingement of the tibia onto the talus is gonna be in this area as well. Um, you know, the tailor neck, head and neck is gonna be here and the vicular is gonna be here. Um, and the sinus tarsus, which is in this area here, is where you can place your, st your steroid or your local anesthetic along as the foot's supinated as much as possible because it opens up and you can pop that in there. So while we're here, we might just look at some nerves on, from this region. And in this wonderful specimen, we can see a nerve rolling across the top quite well, which is the lateral branch of the superficial perineal nerve. Now that comes out from superficial position, usually around here. Sorry, Chris. And you can see it's sending out branches in this direction. And that, that serves this area of the toes and the foot. 
whereas the sural nerve will run from down here and it's like a tree it comes out with lots of branches and it will serve all this area around here fifth toe a little bit of plantar surface all the way down to area there uh, these if you come to the top a bit more the med medial branch or the superficial peroneal will then come across this way and serve across this area so that's the dermatome for there the deep peroneal is usually central at the ankle joint it sits on top of the ankle joint capsule and it comes out superficial in this area here and you can actually palpate it usually lateral to the extensor lucis longus tendon and you can feel it like a little cord in this area here and of course that serves down between the toes and then we'll just go medial now I'll just come around the other way and just looking at this side um, the posterior tibial tendon muscle oh, sorry <laughs> nerve the posterior tibial nerve starts in this area here um, and it will bifurcate anywhere from the tip of the um, medial malleolus to seven centimeters proximal into the medial lateral branches and again normally with a nice ankle, bony ankle like this you can actually feel the, the nerve right here it's not like a cord it won't compress so the bifurcation is probably somewhere up here in this adipose tissue um, and it will split down as i said somewhere between here and here the medial side will go up higher and then the lateral side just goes a bit deeper and dives across the foot and this is where the upper and lower calcaneal chambers or the portipedis lives and that's important because if someone has a uh, long-standing chronic heel spur for example compression on the abductor hallucis here and uh, from plantar to dorsal and from middle to lateral will press on the portipedis and will give radiculopathy can, and that can be on either of those branches and the symptoms will be associated with that so if it's a medial branch it will extend into the arch and into the hallux if it's a lateral branch it will tend to go into this area of the heel and laterally into the fourth and fifth metatarsals and toes but being aware of where the nerve runs allows you to give, for example, a posterior tibial nerve block up nice and high here, about five mils, and then again down here where you can palpate it, and that'll give you a profound block with, with a success rate of about 95%. Um, and then the last one to look at would be the saphenous. So you can see the saphenous uh, vein nicely, and then the, you can actually see the nerve uh, twanging along there. And so the, it usually runs on uh, just lateral or anterior to the vein. And it'll be somewhere like this and this serves this area of the foot the arch area so if you have someone has burning or something along that line then you, you tend to look at this area for any sort of nerve entrapment